Well, hey, it's 9.30, so let's get rocking and rolling, and happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us this morning to hear, oh, probably 15, 20 minutes or so about Property Assess Clean Energy. And uh, before I launch into that, um, I know many of you have worked with the clean energy resource teams in the past or right now, um, but I just want to give a very brief uh, elevator pitch on what CERTS is all about. And it's quite uh, a quite a straightforward mission statement that we have that you can see on the screen that we help individuals and communities do clean energy projects all across the state. We've been around for about 15 years or so, and we have four partners that make up CERTS. Those are the Great Plains Institute, a, a nonprofit in the Twin Cities, the Southwest Regional Development Commission in the Southwest, South, Southwest part of the state, uh, the University of Minnesota, where Dan and I are headquartered and CERTS is headquartered, um, as well as the state of Minnesota. Those four entities make up the clean energy resource teams. So with that, this is really the, the topic of the morning. There was a study done uh, not too long ago by the Rockefeller Foundation that showed across the, the nation for public buildings and for private buildings, there was a trillion dollars to be saved around energy efficiency in these buildings. And I know that won't come as any surprise to you when you think about your own uh, businesses and and nonprofits uh, that you work with on a daily basis, we think about your own communities, there's plenty of savings out there to be found. And the, uh, the state of Minnesota recognizes this as an issue and, and has a number of, again, as you know, rebates and incentives and programs to help businesses, to help nonprofits uh, with this issue and PACE or Property Assessed Clean Energy is one of those initiatives. And quite simply, what PACE is all about is it's a way for businesses that you work with, uh, nonprofits, faith communities, multi-housing providers, really anybody except residential at this point to do energy efficiency improvements or utilize renewables and pay for it as an assessment on their property tax bill. These projects, by the way, are, are growing in popularity across the state because there's always an energy audit component to the project. And so as you're familiar with, the, uh, the energy auditor goes in and then says, hey, if you, if you do these types of improvements, lighting, insulation, whatnot, you'll save $10,000 a year. Uh, the assessment is always going to be lower than what they'll save. So we'll say they save $10,000 a year. The assessment will be $8,000, for example. And I'll go through a few case studies uh, that, that highlight that. So these are, these are cash, flow pro, uh, cash flow positive projects from day one, um, which really help your businesses. And that's really, I'm just going to say from the outset, that's really the request uh, from me to you today is to think about as you are working with your businesses or nonprofits or multi-housing in your communities, um, as you're working with them uh, and they are saying, gosh, yeah, I recognize I need to put in new lighting, um, this can be a tool in your toolbox to present to them as a way to help finance the project. So uh, PACE is available right uh, at this moment to over 80% of, of the population in Minnesota. The areas in green are where PACE is eligible today. So there's two public entities that administer the PACE programs in the state. One is the Rural Minnesota Energy Board in the, in the southern southwest part of the state. 18 counties came together when wind started becoming a, a big issue a, a couple of decades ago. 
they said, hey, instead of having separate rules and regulations in these 18 counties, why don't we come together and form a, a joint powers authority, the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. And they have their own PACE program for entities within those 18 counties. The second public entity is the St. Paul Port Authority. And they are operating a, a PACE program that's called MinPACE. And the Port Authority is signing joint powers agreements with counties across the state. Uh, this has been in operation for about three, four years. So it started with just a handful of counties and has expanded pretty dramatically uh, to the point where you can see we have mo we have all of the, the southern part of the state is covered uh, and we're slowly but surely working our way north. Uh, and the orange, uh, the, the pumpkin colored uh, uh, dots there to, to, to stay with the theme of the day are where PACE projects have occurred. The, uh, and uh, there's been about 150 PACE projects to date. As you're looking at this map, and, and some of you may be in areas that already have PACE, some of you may be in areas that are not green, that do not have PACE. Don't worry about it. Um, if it, the quickest way to get PACE in your area uh, is to have a business or nonprofit that is interested in using this tool. When that happens, um, I can go up to the, the county and, uh, and say, hey, um, Tim's hardware store wants to utilize PACE to do this energy efficiency uh, project. And that really expedites the county board signing an agreement. It's a joint powers agreement with the St. Paul Port Authority. It's sometimes it's a it's a chicken and a, the a, chicken and egg scenario. Sometimes it helps. It definitely helps to have a project already and then go to the board to sign the joint powers agreement. Sometimes we get real uh, champions of of PACE or renewables or energy efficiency at the county level, and they sign the agreement and then go out and market the program. That's just fine as well. So I mentioned uh, there's been about 150 uh, projects so far, uh, about 50 million worth of projects. Um, interestingly, uh, and this is, by the way, um, uh, Port Authority projects. Um, I'd say about 70 or 75 percent of the projects have been solar, uh, 30 percent energy efficiency. The money, the 50 million worth of projects, about 70 million of that goes towards or has gone towards energy efficiency projects, the rest going towards renewables. So it's a, it's a bit of a flip. I should also mention with the Port Authority, uh, the uh, interest rate, there is an interest rate, number one, it's 5%. The term is 10 years fixed interest rate. So whether or not we're talking about the Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program or the St. Paul Port Authority's PACE program, there's a few commonalities. And before I get into that, I'll mention this is a New York Times article from a few years ago talking about how PACE is expanding across the nation. And they highlighted uh, an auto mechanic shop in the Twin Cities that put a 20 kW solar array on their business. So whether or not we're talking about the RMEB's PACE, pro PACE program or the uh, St. Paul Port Authority's PACE program, there's a few commonalities. One is uh, that um, the business can't be in bankruptcy. They uh, have to be up on all of their federal, state, and local taxes. Um, and there's a cap. There's a cap on the amount that can be loaned out. 
and that cap is 20% of the assessed value of the property. Whatever the county says is the assessed value, 20% is the maximum that that business can receive. So uh, it's assessed at $100,000. The maximum that that business can receive is $20,000. I'll talk a little bit about the project process. First of all, uh, that local government or the local government, be it a city or a county, and, and typically, as you saw on the map, we are targeting counties, has to establish a PACE program. Uh, they have to have PACE in place for the business to proceed. Um, that's not a problem in, in uh, those 18 counties. Uh, in the rural Minnesota Energy Board area. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, um, it's typically not a problem. Uh, if you have a business that's interested, I go up to the, the county board. I say, Tim's Hardware wants to, to do this project. They know Tim. They've known Tim for years. They know Tim's a great business. They want to help out Tim. Um, and so, uh, that's typically not an issue at all. Before I move further down the, the project process, this is the, uh, the pictures that you're looking at. It's kind of a neat story. It's a nonprofit in Bemidji that restores World War II aircraft. And uh, they completed an energy audit and found that the insulation in their hangar had compressed over the years. So they essentially had no insulation in the top a uh, couple of feet of their hangar. So you can imagine it must have been pretty chilly. Uh, so they did they did insulation and they did, they did uh, some LED improvements as well and it turned out to be a great project for, for Air Corps Aviation. So uh, the project process, you, you've got the joint powers uh, agreement in place, uh, you're ready to go. The business fills out a uh, an online application. It's five, six pages, pretty much name, rank, serial number information, nothing too complicated. Uh, they, they complete the energy audit uh, and they submit that as well. Uh, they do need to get lender consent. Um, if they have a mortgage on the property, it's, it is required that they go to their mortgage holder and have them sign off. Pace takes a, a priority lien position over the mortgage. And so so the Port Authority wants to make sure that uh, they have lender consent. And typically that's not a problem as well. They submit three years of financials uh, as well with their application and their energy audit. Uh, the, the Port Authority has a, a credit committee. They meet monthly. Uh, so they'll hear back pretty quickly whether or not that loan is approved. And uh, typically the loans are approved. That business or nonprofit can hire whoever they wish to get the project completed. And, uh, and again, uh, this is the case for Port Authority or RMEB projects. Uh, the, the savings uh, should help pay back the assessment. So, uh, so I've mentioned the energy audit. Um, who completes that? Uh, you're you're uh, keenly aware of uh, what an energy audit's all about. What I wanted to mention here is that we always, always, always refer people to their local utility. When a business comes to us and says, "Hey, we're thinking about utilizing Pace," we always point them to their local utility. Um, to learn a, uh, about uh, whether or not that utility performs an energy audit, um, or at a minimum, just to learn about what sort of rebates are available. A good rule of thumb for PACE, whether or not a, uh, a project is eligible for PACE, is if it's eligible for a utility rebate, then it's eligible for PACE. If the local utility doesn't provide an energy audit, uh, then we refer people to Energy Smart or Energy Change, 
uh, if they're in Excel territory, or RETAP, which you may be familiar with as well, the Retired Environmental Technical Assistance Program, uh, free uh, energy audits for businesses across Minnesota. So why, why PACE in the first place? Uh, first of all, it's pretty straightforward for that, for that business. Uh, paying the utility bill is uh, often a challenge uh, each month. And so it helps them lower their utility bill. Uh, PACE is unique is unique in that uh, they uh, will say they do that an energy efficiency improvement on Halloween. It's completed. They they put in their new LEDs and uh, new insulation and uh, new um, energy efficient equipment. They start seeing the savings today on Halloween. They don't make their first payment until May of the following year when they pay their property taxes. So they save starting today. They pay May 2019, and they're generating savings uh, all along the way. It's especially beneficial for solar projects because they put the solar array on today, start seeing savings. Uh, they don't make their payment until May of 2019. They also get the 30% federal tax credit if they are a business uh, and can um, take advantage of accelerated depreciation on their taxes as well. So the other niche for PACE um, is, uh, is professional buildings in, in your communities. Think about Think about strip malls um, or other types of professional buildings where there's tenants. Um, the owner of these buildings can pass on the assessment to the tenants. So instead of just dumping um, 100 grand into the building or half a million dollars into the, into the building, uh, and not seeing a, a good return on investment, uh, that business owner who owns that professional building can, can make these sort of energy efficiency improvements and pass on the assessment to the tenants. The tenants also see the benefit of, uh, of a lower utility bill. Um, so it, it's a win-win it's a for those types of buildings. So I'll go through a, a few case studies. Uh, this is the Blue Line Travel Center down in, in Worthington. If you are heading down I-90, you may have passed by or stopped in the Blue Line Travel Center. Uh, this is a, a couple of years ago, they did uh, some LED improvements on the outside of their building. You can see they have a lot of uh, lighting needs uh, in their parking lot and they have a gas canopy. $74,000 worth of LED improvements. Uh, they uh, were anticipated in saving about $14,000 a year. I understand they're actually saving about two grand a month um, just on this project alone. They utilized the Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program. They took advantage of their local uh, from rebates from their local utility, Worthington Public Utilities. And they also utilize the US Department of Agriculture REAP grant. I wanna make a, a point about this. Rural Energy for America program. Uh, it's not a loan, it's a straight out grant of up to 25% 25, 25 uh, of the project cost. So. A, a, strongly encourage you to familiarize yourself about uh, REAP grants. Very beneficial. So you can see the, the savings of excess of $14,000 a year, the assessment to the Blue Line Travel Center, $9,000 a year. In fact, they were so pleased with this project, they went and got a, a second PACE loan for LEDs on the interior. Uh, lighting. Tim's Trucking, also in the southern part of the state, this one in Rice County uh, near or in Morristown, 
30 kW solar array uh, just north of a hundred thousand dollar project. They utilize the the St. Paul Port Authority's pro PACE program, which I mentioned is called Min PACE. Also took advantage of uh, uh, their local um, utilities rebates, the federal tax credit, and again, uh, the uh, businesses can utilize the the REAP grant for uh, solar projects as well. I like the quote here from the business owner. Um, it's a it's a fairly painless process. Sticking with the southern part of of Minnesota and Mountain Lake, uh, this is an old county hospital that was converted to multi housing several years back, and uh, they did just a, a whole host of energy efficiency improvements, <clears throat> inch and a half thick insulation in their mechanical room, energy efficient water heater, uh, LEDs, etc. Took advantage of the Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program, their local utility, and again, utilized REAP as well. $90,000 PACE project uh, ass assessment of, uh, of uh, just um, south of nine grand and annual savings of just shy of 10 grand. This one's in the Twin Cities, uh, a restaurant. Uh, again, did uh, energy efficiency improvements, um, LED lights, uh, uh, some improvements to their kitchen area. Smaller project, $39,000. Uh, again, I like the quote from the business owner here, the savings should pay back the investment. It's a no-brainer. This one's uh, in Stearns County, and uh, it's a campground near Richmond. Uh, the the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency required that this campground owner put in emergency shelter, and uh, this campground owner put in um, a 40 kW solar array, utilized PACE to pay for it. Um, obviously, for this campground owner, the utility bill was uh, uh, pretty hefty in the summer months. And uh, so solar was a, a great fit for him. Um, took advantage of Made in Minnesota. This was a, a couple of years ago when that was available. And uh, utilized the St. Paul Port Authority's PACE program, the tax credit, uh, really made that capital stack pretty appealing for this campground owner to move forward. This one's near Red Wing, uh, Paul's Handyman Service. Uh, really, this quote, um, again, points out the, the ease for businesses, nonprofits to utilize PACE. Um, it, it's not a really onerous process, I would say. A modest size solar array, 10 kW, uh, $34,000 project, took advantage of PACE and uh, the various incentives available for businesses. A larger building, uh, you'll recognize this building, the iconic First National Bank building with that the big number one. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this was uh, about a year ago, uh, 3,000 LED lights, including the, the iconic uh, first sign, uh, $6.75 million projects, 3,000 LEDs, Variable frequency drives um, uh, on on the pumps and the motors. Um, the the big dollar amount was the a new chiller. They they had an old 1950s 1960s era chiller. They had to get the nation's largest crane to wheel itself into downtown St. Paul in the wee hours of the morning and hoist this this antique chiller out and uh, replace that with a much more energy efficient one. It was the largest at the time, maybe still is, the largest rebate that Excel has ever given out. Uh, uh, more than a million dollars, uh, $300,000 worth of tax credits, and they utilized PACE to make it happen. Um, getting close to wrapping up here, uh, this is 
uh, a farm in Meeker County. And I would say, so that there, there's really two niches for PACE. One is that, that professional building uh, doing energy efficiency or, or renewable projects. The other one is uh, farms utilizing solar. And so this is uh, a farm uh, in Meeker County uh, put in a 40 kW solar array. It's a it's a tracking um, solar system, so very efficient in that manner. Utilize REAP funds, and you can see the total dollar amount that this family farm anticipates saving over the lifetime of the solar array. And that's what I got for you. Um, so again, my my request to you is to be uh, reaching out. Um, to businesses, uh, to, to making uh, them uh, knowledgeable about property assessed clean energy uh, as a tool that they can utilize to finance their, their energy efficiency or renewable projects. Uh, we've got a lot of great resources on the Clean Energy Resource Team uh, website that we can point to, that uh, you can utilize to um, help educate your businesses. and. Um, and we would love to work with you if you have any uh, if you have any events uh, or any um, any ways to help get the word out. We've got regional coordinators across the state, as you as you may know, or or I would love to um, come out to to wherever you are at to help get the word out um, to your businesses and nonprofits. Happy to answer any questions that you may have as we come to the end here. Matt Mazzola had asked, uh, does the company get the utility rebate and the grant money? And yes, in these uh, situations that Pete was describing, the company is receiving both the utility rebates and the, the grant money. Exactly. And so the 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 business uh, say it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar solar array, um, and they know that they're going to be getting some rebate from the utility and a thirty percent tax credit. They can either get a hundred and fifty grand, a uh, hundred percent financing up front um, to pay for that project, or they can say, you know, well, you know what, I know I'm going to be getting this 30% tax credit and an accelerated depreciation and this other rebate, and so I'm only going to need $100,000. Um, whatever the dollar amount that the business uh, wants to receive, that's that's what they'll receive. And it, it, I think that's the only question. So, um, gosh, thank you so much ag again uh, for joining us this morning and really appreciate it. And um, there's my contact information and uh, write that down. And um, please, ag again, uh, appreciate you helping get the word out about Property Assess Clean Energy. And, and again, I'll extend the invitation to um, for our regional coordinators or for myself to work with you to to help get the word out in any way um, you think would be helpful. Hey, have a great Halloween, everybody, um, and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. <laughs>